With it being Friday, our focus has been on Jesus. That's what we want to focus on on Fridays as we get ready and prepare to gather together to worship God on Sunday and remember Jesus and the Lord's Supper. And we've been looking through the book of Hebrews, and a Hebrews writer has been talking to us about how Jesus is the better sacrifice of a better covenant, of a new covenant with better hope, better promises, um, a better everything. And we looked at last time in Hebrews chapter 9 about Jesus is the better sacrifice. And now in chapter 10, the Hebrew writer continues that thought, continues what he was talking about, and explaining why it is that Jesus and his sacrifice are truly what we needed and truly the only thing that we need and why he is the better sacrifice, the better priest, the better covenant, the better everything for our salvation. Let's pick up in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 when he goes on to say, For the law, talking of the old law, the law of Moses, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things themselves, of these realities of the true form, that again, as he said earlier in this book, that the old law, the old covenant, the old priestly service, the old tabernacle, the old temple, those were just a foreshadowing of what was truly going to come, of the true things in heaven that Christ was going to accomplish. And he says, For the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of these things, can never with these same sacrifices, the animal sacrifices, which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. And what he means by that is acknowledging that the animal sacrifices were not the sacrifice we needed. They were insufficient. God allowed them to be given for the forgiveness of sins, but they were not truly the price that was needed to perfect us forever. And that's why they had to keep offering more and more animal sacrifices year after year after year after year because it needed to be repeated. God required it to be repeated because they were insufficient. It couldn't perfect them forever. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. He says if the animal sacrifices did perfect us, perfect the conscience of God's people, if they were truly the price needed to pay for our sins, then they wouldn't have had to keep repeating them over and over and over. For the worshipers who would you know, were once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, the animal sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. A reminder that the blood of animals is not truly the payment that was needed. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. And so how would it feel to be making a sacrifice with animal blood knowing that it was not truly the price needed to pay for your sins, yet by the grace of God, you're, you're being forgiven through these animal, or by giving these animal sacrifices, although these were insufficient, inferior sacrifices that had to be made over and over and over and over and over. Therefore, verse 5, therefore when Jesus came into the world, he said, which he quotes from Psalm 40. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. God did not desire those. He did not truly want the animal sacrifices and offerings because those were insufficient. That God allowed it for a time by his grace. But sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Jesus knew what was needed, what was required. Jesus knew why the Father sent him. Jesus knew why he came to this earth. And he knew that a body he had to put on flesh, that Jesus was going to give his own body, his own life. Because in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, God had no pleasure. Again, the animal sacrifices were insufficient to truly pay for our sins. 
Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. Again, Jesus, being God, knew what was required, knew what was needed to truly bring about our perfect, eternal salvation. And so he came to be that sacrifice. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you did not desire nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law, according to the law of Moses. Then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. Jesus takes away the first that he may establish the second. Basically what that means is, the, the old law, the old covenant, the law of Moses, could never bring about the eternal salvation and perfection we needed through a one-time sacrifice. Jesus knew that. God knew that. So Jesus came to accomplish the true desire and will of God through a different means, through a new means, through a new covenant, through a new law, through new sacrifice. And it is by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. By the will of God, by Jesus accomplishing that will of God, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And that's what he's really revealing and stressing here is that Jesus came to be the better sacrifice, but not a sacrifice that would be repeated over and over and over because all that was needed was Jesus to offer himself as a sacrifice one time to eternally pay for our sins and save us. And that's what he goes on to explain Beginning in verse 11, he says, And every priest, now he goes back to the Old Covenant, to the Law of Moses, that every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, animal sacrifices, which can never take away sins, truly. Again, the only reason the people were forgiven of their sins through, or when they gave these animal sacrifices, was not because the sacrifices were sufficient, but it was because by the grace of God, he allowed it for a time. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, which was his, himself, his own fleshly body, blood, life, after he had offered that one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. He sat down. Think of the imagery. The priests of the old law were standing daily offering sacrifices over and over because they had to keep doing it. But Jesus made gave his sacrifice one time and it was completed. It was accomplished. The will of God was fulfilled and accomplished. So Jesus sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Forever, one time, one sacrifice. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in, in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission or forgiveness of sins, there is no longer an offering for sin. His point is, in the old law, in the old covenant with the animal sacrifices, although God required the animal sacrifices, he allowed it for a time to bring about their sanctification and forgiveness for a time. There was always a reminder of sins because with the understanding that these animal sacrifices are inferior, they're insufficient, they're not the true price that needs to be paid. But Jesus came. 
Jesus took on flesh. Jesus gave himself to die, to be our sacrifice. One time, and one time was all that was needed. Because the requirement for our sins was our own life, was life, was our blood. But none of us could ever pay that price, but Jesus paid it for us once for all, forever. Jesus died once for all to forgive us of our sins forever. And now that God has seen, now that Jesus has been the sufficient sacrifice, God says, now truly I will remember their sins no more because it's been paid for, truly with the true price that was needed. Jesus is the once and for all, the one sacrifice forever that we needed to be truly forgiven of our sins, to be, to be perfected in the eyes of God. And thanks be to God for that. Let's remember that every day as we live, Every day of our lives, let's remember the price that was paid for our sins. Let's be thankful that we don't have to offer animal sacrifices anymore. Let's be thankful that Jesus paid the price for our sins, that we are forever, eternally redeemed. No question, no doubt. It's not insufficient. It's complete. The will of God is fulfilled. The price, the requirement for our sins is fulfilled through Jesus. And let's especially remember that when we come together to partake of the Lord's Supper, let's remember the body of Jesus, the life that he gave. Let's think back on this, that Jesus is the one sacrifice for our sins forever. Praise God. And thanks be to God for that. God bless.